Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series. I'm going to lead you step by step through the ABRSM Theory Grades, working through the Music Theory and Practice Workbooks, exercise by exercise. And we're now starting to work through ABRSM Grade 2 Theory Workbook. If you visit SharonBill.com, there are loads of resources available to help you there. On my website, you'll find some free PDF information sheets like this that I'll be making lots of reference to. They've got all the information that you need to help you to work through this series. They're available in US letter or A4 and will accompany each step of this series. There's also a page which links to all of my YouTube video tutorials. You can also access information about the books that I have available. If you're working towards a music theory exam, you can see that I've written how to take your ABRSM music theory exam and it's full of tips and techniques to help you to best prepare for the exam and also <clears throat> oh, excuse me, how also to make the best use of that exam time. So if you go to SharonBill.com, it's all there for you. If you can give me a like, that would be fab, that'd be really encouraging to me. And if you can subscribe to my channel, you'll be sure to keep updated. And so let's crack on with Grade 2 Theory in Practice, and we're working on page 5. So if you turn in your workbook, you will need to make sure that you've got one of these workbooks to work through. So you can work with me every step of the way. And you need to have your PDF sheet for this section, Grade 2, Section A. And we're going to be moving on to Exercise 2. And this is now writing notes, but we're going to be converting clefts without changing the note at all. And so if you just refer to this PDF that I've written, you can see these are the notes that we're going to be using. These are the notes that we've worked on on the first exercise in section A. And now we're going to be converting from treble to bass or bass to treble. And we don't need to change the pitch. We've got to be careful we don't end up jumping octaves. And so the main point is to make sure that you keep relating back to middle C. And so if you remember that middle C is at the bottom of the treble, or at the top of the bass, imagine that you sort of met in the middle of the treble and the bass as they join together and then overlap. Keep relating back to middle C and you'll be sure not to go wrong. Let's look at this example that they've given us on exercise 2 on page 5. Here we have C, D, E, or every good boy des deserves football, and the treble clef, that's note E, and that is the E above middle C. And so to convert that into the bass clef, we need to think, well, there's middle C, C, D, E. This note and this note is exactly the same note, just written in a different clef. We sort of overlapped the use of the clefs to write exactly the same note in different ways. If you didn't make sure that you were aware of where middle C was, in each of those clefts, you could end up by writing, for example, that E would be wrong. That E would be wrong because we'd be in the wrong octave. Only this one is the correct answer. Let's have a go. I'll work through this next one with you. So here we have, there's middle C in bass clef at the top of the bass clef. One note below that is B, so this is the B below middle C. And so if we think about how to write that exact note in the treble clef, here's the middle C line, and so that is the note B. The reason that we end up changing clef is because if we carried on in this manner, and we kept going and we didn't change clef, we'd just end up with so many ledger lines, it would become very, very difficult. It would become impossible to read. And so as notes get too high for the bass or too low for the treble, we would then swap clef so that we're not dealing with too many ledger lines. And so now I suggest you press pause and have a little go at these remaining few exercises. Doesn't matter if you go wrong, make sure that you're writing in pencil, keep your pencil sharp so it's nice and neat. And have a go, and it doesn't matter if it's gone wrong, you can always learn by your mistakes. And I'll work through those afterwards when you re-access into this video. 
And so I'm guessing that you've now had a go at these few remaining exercises and I'll just work through those with you to check your answers through. And so here we have a D above middle C in the treble clef, just next door. And so if we transfer that to the bass clef, there's middle C. And so one step above, there's the D above middle C in the bass clef. A few more ledger lines will be involved in this next one because if we think there's a middle C at the top of the bass clef, so we've got C, B, A, G below middle C, and so to write that in the treble clef, we're going to have to extend quite a few notes down. So we've got C, there's our middle line, middle C line, B is the space, A would be the second line, and G would be there. If you're not really sure about that, you can refer back to the sheet that I've given you on the PDF and you can just double check where those notes are until they become a bit more familiar. However, try not to rely too heavily on this all of the time. It's much better, you will learn it more thoroughly if you just try and work it out as you go along here. Let's have a look at this next one. So here's middle C at the bottom of the treble clef. So C is the line, D, E, F, so that's the F just above middle C. And so to create that in the bass clef, middle C line is at the top of the bass clef. So we've got, there would be C, D is the space, E is the second line, and so this would be F. Let's look at this last remaining one. So here in the bass clef, that would be middle C at the top of the bass clef, B is the space, this is the A, and we know that because it's good boys deserve football always, but we need to be aware that it's the A just three steps away from middle C. And so to create that in the treble clef, that ex exactly the same note, think there's your middle C line, the space would be B, and then next door to that is the A, and that's that. Let's just turn the page over and you can see that there are lots of exercises doing that very same principle. So long as you start off on the right note, relating back to middle C, you know you've got it covered really. I would suggest always keeping your bar lines aligned. It's not quite exactly aligned as they've given it to you the exercise but I would keep your bar lines aligned so you don't lose track where you are. You can see that we've started on this C B A G below middle C and so C B A G is there, they've started us off. We can keep track and make sure our middle C's tally so there's another point to sort of keep your eyes peeled, that's a pair of glasses. Uh, my conductor always used to do that and it's sort of a little thing now where it's stuck. Just keep your eyes peeled and make sure that your middle C's have tallied. And then really just think about it, there's middle C, upper step, upper step, upper step. Keep adding the ledger lines as we need to go, back down a step and so back down a step back up a step, you can do a double check and think C, D, E, C, D, E, back down a step next door and now we've gone down two steps from space line space and we've actually gone below middle C so one, two, three is there. I'm starting to float a bit too high up there aren't I? Let's just bring those down just as you're concentrating, your pencil wanders, doesn't it? There we go. So there is our middle C reference point and we've got one below that. Now we're going back to this note here, back up three steps, the other side of middle C. Now here's our reference point, there's middle C, down a step, so we know that we've made that accurately. And then down one, two, three, from line to line, one, two, three, that's the A below middle C, and then back up one step. So we know we've got those 
correctly placed. Now of course the stems are going to go the other way now because we're much higher in the base clef, we're above that middle line so the stems have to flip. Here we're low in the treble clef and so the stems are the other way round. And we'll just put ETC to show that that music will carry on, it's not the end of the bar line. And so have a go yourself at this next two. I think perhaps I'll just be generous and give you your starting note on this first one. Do just set out your bar lines. Just so you can, it's just easier to keep in step so you don't lose track of where you are in the exercise. So we need our time signature, common time. If you remember from your grade one, that means four crotchet beats or four quarter notes per bar. So let's just work out where our first couple of notes are. There's our middle C line. C, B, A, G below middle C. C, B, A, G below middle C. There we go. And then here's our reference point. There's middle C. We've gone up one, two, three, four. One, two, th three, four. Space, line, space, line. So we should be on middle C. So <clears throat> if you want to press pause and have a little go at this one, finishing this exercise off, and then please do go ahead and look at the next one, the last one in exercise three. Just have a little go. It doesn't matter if you make a mistake, you're working in pencil and then re-access into the video and I'll work through that with you. So I'm hoping that you've had a little go of that on your own and so I'll just talk you through this one as we work through this answer together and then this next one I'll just move a little more quickly along. So here we've got our middle C we'd found so just down a step takes us to the B next door to middle C, C, B. If you're not sure remember you can always keep peeping back to these here until you become familiar with them. Do use this to help you but after a while it's just as simple to just work it out step by step. So back next door, upper step, takes us to middle C. Notice I'm only doing the note heads at the moment, I'm not even thinking about the stems, just think of one thing at a time, we'll deal with the stems later. And so now we've gone down from line to line, so we're skipping over the space, one, two, three, one, two, three, so just working our way down, so that takes us to the A below middle C, down another step, next door note takes us to the G and then we're all the way back to middle C again, there's our reference point to make sure we've not got the octave wrong or we've not got too far out of step. And so now we're going to go one step above that middle C, there's the D, one step again, so this time we want two ledger lines, back down next door to the D, so we've gone D, E, D, back to the E again, and then here's our middle C reference point again, and we've gone one, two, three, one, two, three, so just double check that we're in step here. Next door upper note is the D below middle C and then we're jumping the other side of middle C so we don't need the line now that would be redundant and we're on the B below middle C. Let's just pop some stems in if you want to use a ruler to make sure that they're really neat and tidy by all means do so. Remember as the note heads go up and down in step <coughs> excuse me um, we can see that that's reflected in the stems so it's easy to see the notes moving up and down and we'll just finish with an ETC just to show that that bar isn't complete okay this next one looks quite busy so let's just um, soldier on through this quickly so I'm just aligning my bar lines especially with all of these semi quavers we don't want to get lost and get ourselves out of sync so it's easier to just keep everything aligned so now we're putting a 
key signature and remember we have to transfer that to the bass clef so F sharp is good boys of football next line down and all cows the C sharp is next space down two four we'll have some rests just to get everything tidied up and then let's get started. We'll just do the note heads first of all. It looks like it's going to be an awful lot of work but if you can see there's quite a lot of repeated notes so we should get through this pretty quickly. It's not as overwhelming as it first seems. So there's our middle C line. C, B, A. C, B, A. We should be starting there. If you've not started there, but you've started on another octave, that won't be correct. You need to start on that top line because it's the A just below middle C. So now we are one above middle C on the D. Other side of the middle C line takes us to the B. Now here we were on the D, we've gone even one higher. So we need two lines to get us to the E. You can double check that by counting one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Make sure you're the correct number of steps away. Back to where we started. And now here we're back to the D above middle C. So we'll need the ledger line to show that. We've got that three times. You have to be quite neat and small, otherwise you'll run out of space in your bar. Hopping the other side of middle C, so now we're one note below middle C, and then we're all the way back to this note E, so we'll need two ledger lines. Just check we've got the right number of steps, counting one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, yeah, that's correct. And then we're one note higher again, so we still need the two ledger lines. And we get that three times. Middle C, there's our reference point. Okay, so now we're one below this one and we're back to the E. So we still need the two lines, but we're just on the line for the E. C, D, E. One below middle C now. Now we're one above middle C. Okay, there's our middle C line, C, B, A, C, B, A, so we don't need the ledger line just now. Next door note is B, and if everything's correct, our next door note should be middle C. So we know we've ended in the correct place, so we just need to pop some stems on now, watch out which ones are semi-quavers, which ones are quavers, which ones are dotted, just be careful to copy accurately. Now because we've got so many of the same note, even though it just dropped down four steps, you'll notice that they've kept the line straight and so we shall copy that. Same principle here and here. But you can still see, relatively speaking, the overall direction of the music. By all means, take your time and use a ruler. I'm just trying to charge through that quickly. Okay, so now moving on to exercise four. Um, we're going to do the same thing, but going the opposite way. So now... We're rewriting from bass to treble, but it needs to be at exactly the same pitch. Let's have a little go at this. Now, this one here is a nice starting point because we start on middle C, and so that's our reference point straight away. So we just need the time signature here. We'll be discussing this new time signature in a moment. Okay, so here's middle C in the treble clef. And so we know we're starting at the correct point. We've got that repeated. Ooh, I'm keeping those aligned, but I haven't done my bar lines. So let's pop some bar lines in straight away. 
And so we know we're starting at the correct point and so I suggest that you just press pause and try this next few exercises yourself. And then once you've had a go at that, take your time, you can re-access into the video. And we'll work through those together. So then, let's move on and have a go at these. I'm presuming you've had a little go at this yourself. So we've started our middle C. We've still got a C, but this time we need to add the accidental of a sharp. We've gone up one step. Next door note is D. Oh, that's a minim or a half note, so I shouldn't be colouring that in. Okay, now we're going much lower. So C, B, A, G. C, B, A, G. Same again. Next door note. So we still need the two lines for that, but for this one we're going up again, so we only need one line. Finishing on C. Put our rest in, that was quite a nice one. There we go. Let's have a go at exercise B. So I'm hoping that you've had a little go of this yourself. If you haven't, just press pause and try it now. Try and get yourself started on this B and C, and then I'll work through those with you. If you've had a go, then we'll just carry on together. So we need our time signature, common time. And so we're beginning there's our C reference point, D, E. So we're on the C, D, E above middle C. Now we've gone one below middle C and count the steps, including the one you start with. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We're now above middle C on the D. And here, down a step should take us to middle C. If it doesn't, you've gone wrong somewhere and you just need to backtrack and find out where that's gone awry. So now, C, B, A. So we'll need two ledger lines for C, B, A. You've always got to be thinking line, space, line, space. Up a step. Up a step should bring you to C. Here's our reference point again. Now up from line to line, so we're hopping over to C, D, E. Down a step, takes us to D, same again, and finishing on that D so we don't need a ledger line again. Let's add some stems to that and a dot there. By all means use a ruler. You want to make that nice and neat and tidy. Okay, so we've got the last one to look at now. Let's look at this one. Pop some bar lines in quickly. A lot of this, it's just, perhaps takes a bit of time. It's a longer video, it just takes a little bit of time in writing out, but there's not too much thinking involved. Once you've got yourself started, so if you've got your first note correct, everything else just should follow relatively simply. So here is C, B, A, the A below middle C. So we're going to need some ledger lines going on here. C, B, A, with the upper step takes us to one below middle C. And now we've gone down. below that first note that we started with. We've gone one, two, three steps down. One, two, three, space, line, space. Same note again is tied. Remember from grade one, a tie joins note head to note head outside of the stems. Okay, so we're hopping back to this note, the B below middle C. Back again to this note, it should be next door, so that's correct. We've gone space line, 
back next door takes us to the B again and then if we go next door again that should take us to the middle C if it doesn't you know you've gone wrong somewhere you need to backtrack we're back on the A we started from up next door next door again should give us middle C and then we're going down one, two, three, four steps. One, two, three, four steps. And if you notice, that note and that note should be the same. If they're not, something's gone amiss. It's just keeping track on what's gone on before as well to help. So there's the B, below middle C, finishing on the A. There we go. And that's that. Let's just pop some stems. Of course, they'll be going the other way because these are very low in the treble clef. Because we're beginning and ending on the same note, that can just be a straight line. Don't forget the dot. That's gone a little bit out there. Just tidy that up dot semi and there we go it's as simple as that i hope that's been helpful to you thanks for watching this video if you can give me a like if that's been helpful to you if you've enjoyed it uh, give me a thumbs up that would be fab i'm really enjoying working through this with you if you can subscribe to my channel, you'll be sure to keep updated with all the things we've got in store. We've got lots to be working through. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. Please do go to SharonBill.com to help you with all the resources there. Do access that and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.